Well, good morning, Destiny. Good morning, good morning, good morning. Wow. We are excited that this is our Sunday morning worship experience and that God has allowed us to be able to converge, to come together one more time. I pray today that you are experiencing the joy of the Lord because the word of the Lord says that the joy of the Lord is our strength. We want to say good morning to all of our partners, to all of our guests that are viewing with us on this morning. We thank you for being here. We thank you for being a part of Destiny Life Sunday morning worship experience. We want to say good morning to our apostle overseer, Dr. Ron Green as well. To all the elders, mothers, deacons, saints, and friends, God bless you and God bless you. Now, if you haven't had a chance to hit that like button, hit that share button, let everyone know that we are live on this morning. Listen, it's giveaway time. That's right, it's giveaway time. I believe that we need to do some giveaway on this morning. I know it's not a Wednesday night, but I just feel really, really good in my spirit this morning. And I want to bless some, some partners. I want to bless some individuals on this morning. Listen, whatever you do, make sure that you keep God first. We are in such a critical time uh, right now. I don't have to tell you. You'll probably hear me say that until Jesus come. But we are in such a critical time right now. And it is necessary that we say focus on what God has called us to do. Amen. It's important that we gather our families, that we begin to instruct and teach and, and begin to impart wisdom into them so that they will know how to conduct themselves outside of the perimeters of our homes because there's so much that is going on, but God is still worthy to be praised. So we want to say to you again, good morning, God bless you and welcome to our Sunday morning virtual experience. On this past Wednesday evening, uh, we had some individuals who shared the live experience. We had some individuals who shared the live experience. And so on this morning, I want to bless those individuals who collaborated with us, who hit that share button and got the word out that we were live on this Wednesday evening. So I'm going to ask those who were a part of that, who shared the live experience on this past Wednesday, I'm going to ask that you um, send your information to me. We want to make sure we have your contact phone number. We want to make sure we have your address. We want to make sure that we have the means to get your prize to you. Amen, amen, amen. So again, we want to welcome all of our viewers that are joined with us on Instagram and to those who are viewing with us by way of Facebook as well. We want to say good morning morning to you and we are ready for the word of the Lord. You know the song that began to come forth and even the prayer began to speak about the power of Jesus. That there is power in the name of Jesus. You know and there are sometimes in your life and in my life when you don't know what else to do. You don't know who else to call. You don't know who to run to but you can always run and call on Jesus. When you begin to call on Jesus he will answer prayer. So we want to just encourage you that if you don't know that name, get familiarized with that name because there is power in the name of Jesus. There's no other name that is greater than the name of Jesus. Satan trembles at that name. Come on, I need someone right now, wherever you are, you may be in your home, you may be in the bed, you may be sitting in your, your comfy chair with your coffee in your hand. I want you right now to just declare the name of Jesus. Come on, I need to hear you shouting his name because there is power in the name of Jesus. Oh, come on, there is healing and deliverance in the name of Jesus. So, so again, we're giving away this morning. There should be some information coming on your screen in just a second. We want you to text that information, your number, uh, to that number that is coming on the screen, your phone number, your address. We want to make sure that we have the information that we need to be able to get your prize to you. So if you were one of those individuals who shared the live experience on this past Sunday, uh, Wednesday night, we want you to make sure that you send us your information. Good morning, Mother Maria. Mother Maria is live with us by way of the telephone this morning. We say good morning to you, Mother Maria. She is live and full in effect. Good morning, Mother. 
Amen, amen, amen. So we, we, amen, amen, amen. Mother, if you can mute your phone, we're getting ready for the word of the Lord. So the number is on the screen to those who are part of the giveaway. And then if this week, this week that's coming up, that's right, the week of, what is this, the 14th, if this is your birthday, if you have a birthday this week, we want you to text giveaway to that same number, 321-252-1678. We want to bless you. We want to be a part of celebrating you on this week. So again, for the giveaway, if you share the live on this Wednesday, we want you to text to 321-252-1678. We want you to text the word giveaway and make sure that you fill out the uh, information sheet. If this week is your birthday, we want you to also text the word giveaway to 321-252-1678. All right, all of that is in order and place. We're ready for the word of the Lord. Again, if you don't know, you are at Destiny Life Church virtual worship experience. We want to say again, good morning to each and every one of you. Um, I believe that the Lord has been speaking. I've been receiving your text messages. I've been receiving your emails. I have been receiving uh, your prayer requests. I have been receiving the confirmation of what it is that God has been speaking through uh, these services and how it has been manifesting in your life. You know, faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God. In order for our faith to be strengthened, in order for our faith to be renewed, we need to hear the word of God. It is through the hearing of the word of God that we receive faith, that our faith is increased. Come on, someone. So here it is. Satan desires to sift us. He desires to steal and rob and, and destroy our faith, which is our confidence in God. But through the hearing of the word of God, through the hearing of the word of God, faith comes by hearing. Our faith is infused. Our faith, we become empowered. We become like, we feel like we're unstoppable. You know, when you have faith, that is an assurance that God is backing you up. You're believing so strong into something or someone that you know nothing is impossible as long as that someone is on your team. Well, I want to let you know this morning that Jesus is on your team. He is ready to partner with you in that situation. He is ready to partner with you concerning your marriage, your children, uh, your job, your career, the healing that you may need in your body. Whatever it is that you need, come on someone, your faith can make it happen. Your faith, your confidence, your assurance in the Holy Ghost that God is able to do a seemingly, abundantly, above all that you could ever ask, think, or imagine. That's the kind of God that we serve, that God wants to blow your mind. I need someone to put that in the comment section. God blow my mind this week. Yeah, you might have gotten a no this week, come on, this past week, but come on, I need you to declare it with me. God blow my mind this week. That's right. God blow my mind. God do it for me. Do it in ways that I did not even think could be done. Come on, if you have the faith, the confidence, assurance in God, I'm telling you right now that God will release a favor upon your life that cannot be denied nor misquoted. Come on, someone. I'm here to infuse your faith today. I am here to push you through the word of the Lord to let you know that God is working on your behalf. I need somebody to say that with me. God is working on my behalf. Come on, have you opened up your mouth and released your faith yet? Have you told him what you need yet? Have you released your faith for it? Come on, do you see yourself doing it? Do you see yourself having it? Come on, I need someone to come into a agreement with me today that God is working on your behalf. I know it may seem like he's silent, but God is working even while he's silent. I know it may not seem like he's saying much. It may not seem like he's doing much, but I declare and decree today that God is working on 
on your behalf. So we've been talking over the last couple of weeks about how many of us, we feel like we're in the middle of a process. We're walking through this journey called life. We're walking this journey out. Some of us are walking it out consciously. Some of us are running full force. There are others of, of us that may still be a little reluctant. There may be some that are uncertain, not sure. However, we all are in a process to our promotion. I declare it and decree it that by the end, I'm not talking about no stimulus check. Come on, I'm not talking about something that's temporary. I'm talking about God is getting ready to put something on your life. He's getting ready to release something in your hands. He's getting ready to put something in your heart. He's already speaking to you, stirring you up, waking you up, agitating you in the spirit in your dream. God is getting ready to hide that. God is getting ready to release you into a dimension that you never saw coming. My God, my God, what a word. I need somebody to write that down so that pastor can go back, come on, at the replay and catch that. Come on, God is getting ready to release something on your life. Come on, someone that you did not see coming. He's getting ready to bless you in ways that you did not think of. Ooh, who am I talking to today? Come on, whatever you do, lift your head up. God is up. He is not down. Don't you be discouraged or dismayed. God is working, Mother Maria, on your behalf. So we are in the process. We are in the process to our promotion. It's promotion time. It's reward time. Someone say that with me. It's promotion time. It's reward time. It's not just. It's just not. It's just not a. a, 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 a it's just not a promotion time. But it's reward time. God is getting ready to reward you. Why is He going to reward you? Because you were faithful. Why is He going to reward you? Because even when you could have stopped, you did not quit. You you kept on pushing even when you doubted, even when you were not sure. You kept the faith in your God. And let me say something to you. There's one thing about God that he looks for. He looks for consistency. I need somebody to write that down. God is looking for consistency in my life. He's not just looking for you to be with him when things are going wrong and then when things get well, you bail out. But God is looking for consistency. God is looking for consistency. He's looking to see if all you wanted was what he had, but you didn't want. Come on, somebody, who he is. God is moving in this hour beyond just giving you what he has. He wants to know, do you want who he is? Who is our God? He is a loving God. Who is our God? He is a kind God. He is a gentle God. Oh, I need somebody to get this in your spirit today that God is getting ready to not only promote me but is getting ready to reward me this is rewarding season but there is a process come on some processes are different some processes take longer it seems like some of you may be saying well God I've been in the same place this same position hallelujah for a long time when am I coming out when are things going to shift God is saying when you stay Focus on me when you don't bail out. You can't be wishy-washy. You can't be two-sided. You can't be one foot in and, and one foot out. It just doesn't work that way. And there are some things that you want to acquire in your life that really is going to require God. Let me say this again. There are some things. I don't care how many people you know. I don't care how many doors you try to walk through. I don't care how many degrees you get. I don't care what you do. There are are some things there are some doors there are some uh, uh benefits there are some rewards there are some promotions that can only come through your faithfulness come on your faith in god your consistency come on and you desiring not just what he has but who he is oh come on every time that i desire who god is i get better every time i desire 
in a process. That's right, Mother Maria, I hear you this morning. We're in a process, but we need confidence. Confidence is the access to God and to our spiritual inheritance. Let me say that again. We need God. We need to have confidence. Whatever you're dealing with right now, whatever you've been dealing with all this year, that came is a continuation from last year and the year before and the year before. Let me tell you what might be the missing ingredient to the recipe is that we must have confidence. And I'm not just talking about confidence that we turn on and we turn off. I'm talking about having confidence, which is the access. Our confidence, saints of God, is our access to God. It is the key. It is the access that we need in order to get from where we are in the natural into the spiritual realm. Our confidence has to be in God because it is our gatekeeper. It is the way that gives us access. Come on, if you know anything about living in a gated community and you're going to visit someone that uh, that lives there but you don't, in order to gain access onto the other side of that gate, you need something called a code. You need a code. And I'm here to tell you that our confidence, our faith in God is the code that we need need. It is the call that we need to get from one realm to the next realm, to get from one dimension to the next dimension, to get from one healing to the next healing, to get from one breakthrough to the next. You got to believe that God can do it even when it's taking too long. Can I talk to somebody that says, I've been waiting for a long time for A, B, and C. Well, can I just encourage you today? They that wait upon the Lord. Come on, you got to keep on waiting. Whatever you do, you got to keep on waiting. Waiting. Tell discouragement, you got to take a seat. Tell discouragement, as a matter of fact, get up out of this house. Get up out of this temple. Come on, Soma, because I've got a God like Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. They said, even if he doesn't rest to us. It's not that we know that he can, but we know that he can. Come on, somebody. But even if he doesn't, I'm still going to trust in my God. See, that's the kind of confidence that you and I need in order to gain our spiritual inheritance. So that's our opening. I'm almost done. Come on. I hope you're here with me. Come on. Colossians 4 and 12. I, I need you to hear this scripture because this is a very, 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 very good scripture. This is a very good backing up scripture Colossians 4 and 12 says pray that you'll stand firm mature and confident in everything God wants you to do see 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 you gotta understand that this Bible is our manual this Bible is our instruction instructional tool that we need it knows it already it already it already knew foresaw that we was going to come up against trouble it already knew that along the journey called promotion along the journey called advancing along the way of of, of, of conquering and and overcoming and establishing and, and and doing everything that God has called us to do it already knew that we were going to deal with conflict or opposition so it, it gives us scriptures throughout the Bible to give us the instructions that we need when we find ourselves in different perspectives or different uh, seasons in our life so here while we're in the still in the midst of a pandemic while still people are dying while still people are losing their job while yet people are still going to the hospital and they're not coming home here it is while we're still believing God for businesses and we're still believing God for all kinds of things come on God already knew that we were going to face some challenges he already knew we were going to deal with some hiccups he already knew that we would experience some setbacks he already knew that there would be something that would try to oppose or stop you and I from moving forward. So Colossians 4.12 begins to say to us, pray that you'll stand firm. See, this is what I need you to understand on today. That no matter where you are, no matter what mindset you possess, no matter what you're going after, no matter what you're trying to accomplish or achieve, I need you to understand something that you must stay in firm. Satan will come and will try to knock the breath out of your body or your limbs from under you. But whatever you encounter, whatever you go through, you must have a I'm going to stand firm determination. He says not only stand firm, but I'm praying that you will mature. See, as you continue, as we continue to live, the older that we get, or for some, the younger that we get, 
the more our maturity will be tested. Come on, someone. I gave you the analogy the other day about a baby. Come on, when a parent has a child, they do not expect to carry that child for the rest of that child's life. If that child is 40 and still needs to be carried, there is something wrong with the developmental... Mm, the development of that child. But that parent expects when they get around seven, eight, nine months that they should start showing some signs that they are maturing. So then they start noticing that they're scooting, they're moving from where they put them to another location. Then they start seeing them try to get up and crawl. And a parent gets really excited when they start seeing that. And then the next thing you know, one day the baby is grabbing hold of the table or grabbing hold of mommy's leg and the baby is standing up and once that baby gets to this stage man it is over watch out put your stuff up don't leave your drink on the coffee table because that baby is about to go for what he or she know and that's how it should be as it is in the natural so shall it be in the spiritual God is looking for maturity out of you and I if you still are the same person that you was two years ago three years ago but you an intercessor you a prayer warrior the devil is a liar come on somebody there should be something different about you and I by now even if nobody else don't see it I'm not talking to you today from the lens of someone else from the opinions of someone else but even if nobody else don't see it I need you to have confidence in the Bible the Bible that you told the scriptures that you read I need you to have confidence that there is power in the name of Jesus and through knowing this you and I should be maturing so the Bible says in Colossians 4 and 12 because I can stay there all day come on I need you to ask someone come on how is your growth where is your growth what stage of development spiritually are you on are you still a complainer are you still a whiner come on do you still don't like nobody even yourself come on are you growing come on where are you are you easily offended. Come on someone. Do you still have to be held by the hand to tithe and to serve and to worship and to pray and to pray? Come on someone. Where are you spiritually in your growth? Because by now you should be so thankful and grateful. I said by now. Come on. There is no certainty that any one of us is going to make it out of this pandemic. Hallelujah. But when you've got confidence in God come on. There should be a gratitude and a thankfulness that says God I thank you that while everybody is still waiting on an unemployment check. I thank you that I'm still on my job. I thank you that even in the midst of this pandemic, that I still got promoted. I still got a raise. Who am I talking to today that has, has forgotten what it means? Hallelujah to be grateful and thankful. I know sometimes we think we're just getting what we deserve because of the time that we put in, but baby, there's some stuff that God has done for you. There's some stuff God has done for me that we did not deserve, but he did it anyway. Do I have a praiser this morning that can testify that say, I know what you're talking about, Pastor. There's some stuff right now that I'm able to read. There's some stuff right now that I've got in my life that I know I did not deserve. I didn't deserve a second chance, but he came into me anyway. I did not deserve a third chance. I had messed up so bad, but he did it anyway. He looked beyond your false head, she come, and he saw your knees. I need somebody to give God a prayer. But it says that I'm praying that you'll stand firm, that you'll stand mature, uh, and that you'll be confident in everything God wants you to do. Here it is. Paul is asking God to make us strong. This is Paul talking here. He's asking God to make us strong and perfect, fully confident that we are following, advancing towards the whole entire will of God. So there are three things in this verse that it is saying to us as believers about advancing or moving forward, Teresa, purposely. Number one, Paul is saying here, stand firm, which means to maintain an unyielded, strict, disciplined, determined strength of character. <laughs> this is a character check. This is a character check. Here it is. Stand firm means to maintain. 
Come on, there are too many people that are procrastinators. This is why nobody believes anything that you say. You got some amazing ideas, but you never follow through with anything. Who am I talking to? Don't shout me down, shout me up. Just say ouch if you have to. Come on, there are some people that are easily distracted. Come on, someone that was good as long as there was nothing driving by. You was good as long as nobody started talking around your you on the left. You was good as long as you kept your eyes on God and you stayed in God's word. Come on, but Paul is saying that I'm praying that in this hour that you will stand firm, which means to maintain an unyielded strict discipline. Here it is. God is saying that I want to look at your appetite because see, whatever your appetite is, whatever you put in in you will be, come on someone, what we will be able to see the strength of that comes out of you. Come on someone, so if you're the one that's always being distracted, you're always being moved, oh I just heard that, there are many of you, the reason why you can't stand firm is because you cannot make up in your mind if you want to do A, B, C. You know, it's really, really dangerous and good at the same time when you're just so talented that you can do so many different things. Come on someone, but the danger is it is when you're trying to do all of those things at one time. I need somebody to hear me on this morning that God is trying to bring balance into our life. He's trying to bring discipline, order into our life. And then lastly, the word stand firm means to be strengthened in our character. Number two, what Paul was saying here in Colossians 4 and 12 is that he prays that we will mature. So mature means to perfect our relationship with God. To reach an advanced stage of spiritual, mental, and emotional development. To mature means to get there. I need someone to say, to mature means to get there. There are just some things that are urgent right now. And one of those things is to mature. It is very critical that you and I mature. In other words, that we grow up so we can get there. Come on. The process to promotion it's very important that we mature. You got to stop taking everything so personal. You got to stop thinking, low is me, woe is me. No, no, no. It's time that you grow up. Come on. It's time that you grow up, that you stand up, that you know who you are in God, and that you stand firm so that you can accomplish it, so that you can achieve it. Come on, someone, so that we don't make God look like a liar. <laughs> Always talking about what God said he going to do, and you're, you're in agreement with it. Come on, you spoke it, you prayed it, God came in agreement with it, but because we're not mature, because we're not disciplined, because we're like not balanced, procrastinators, here we are 10 years later still talking about what God said he's going to do, that he spoke five years ago, but you just wasn't mature enough, come on someone, to stand faith, stand tall enough, so with unyielding, come on, with no restrictions, come on, with, with no boundaries, but just saying, listen, I'm going to do this. I'm going to do the one thing that I do best in. Here it is. Here's the assignment. Let's start here. Let's say I'm going to do the one thing that I'm the best in. I'm going to start there. All the rest, I'm going to put them to the side just for a moment. But I'm going to focus the rest of this year on the one thing that I know that I can do. Those other things I've struggled with. Those other things I might need a little more teaching, a little more mentorship. But here it is. Lastly, he says, be confident, which means to maintain faith through great opposition. And I know I'm talking to at least three or four of you that need some confidence. You need some confidence because here it is. When someone says no to you, everything changes. Your, your, your position changes. Your mindset changes. You get all sad. You get all weary. You start talking all crazy. Now we got to come. We got to push you back up. We got to help build your momentum. No, here it is. Remain confident. I need somebody to say that with me. I need more confidence. That, that says, even if people think you crazy because you're sleeping in your car, at least you got a car to sleep in. But I'm going to remain confident in what God showed me. I'm going to keep saying it even while people know my business. I'm going to keep saying it until I see. Come on. I, I'm only saying it because I see it. And even if I don't see it, I'm going to keep saying it until I see it. And I'm not going to stop there. I'm going to keep saying it until what I see manifests in my life. Come on. Somebody give God praise there. So I've been talking to you about the dream and how God has given each and every one of us a dream. He's given each and every one of us the ability to see our future.
revelation before we actually get there. The purpose of a dream, I told you, is to provide revelation and faith for the journey towards a promising future. The reason why God releases dreams and visions in our spirit is so that faith can, and expectation for God's plan and purpose for our lives can become an obtainable reality. I told you that you will never reach you will never reach for what you can't believe for. Let me say that again. Many of you right now, the reason why you sit there and you hear all this good word and you ain't doing nothing is because you're not reaching. You will not, you will never reach for what you're not believing for. If you don't have the faith to believe it, I need you to connect with somebody who believes in you. Oh, I know I just said something right there. I wrote a question to God last night when I was laying in the bed. It was almost around midnight. And I said, God, who still believes in me? I'm not talking about God. I asked the question. I want my God to tell me. I just asked it. I don't know where it came from, but I just laid there on my bed around midnight and I literally wrote it down in my phone and I said, God, I wonder who believes in me. And I put it in all caps. Here it is. Even if you can only find one person in this season of your life, find one person who can believe farther, greater, bigger than you. Come on, someone. Connect with them in the spirit realm. Come on, come on, someone. And so that you can be able to reach for what it is that God, there are some of you, you are some amazing people. You just don't know it yet. My God. There are some of you, you are some incredible people. You just don't know it yet. There are some of you, you're some bright, brilliant people. You just don't know it yet. There are some of you, you are millionaires. You just don't believe it yet. There are some of you, you are business owners. You just can't see it yet. Oh, I know I'm preaching on the day. There are some of you, you are homeowners. You know, no, 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 shut up. You are homeowners. We've got people in our ministry. Sister Sheila, who built a house as a single woman. Sister Kawana, that built a house as a single woman. Sister Shanika, that bought a house. And there are so many stories of those, hallelujah, who step out on faith on nothing. And look at where they are today. Don't tell me that you don't have no examples to look for, to look after, to be able to glean for. There are some of you, you are some incredible, beautiful people. You just haven't come to the realization of who you are yet because you're still trying to find who you are in the opinions of man instead of having confidence in your God. My God, I felt that in the depths of my soul. There were many of you, you are struggling because you are believing the lies of the devil. But the devil is a liar. I come to break every lie that the devil has spoken about your life. I come to break it. I cancel it in the mighty name of Jesus. He got another little Oh, I feel a story in my speed of a shine on a bowl. He got another whole shine on a little bus I need somebody to get this word in it. Oh, she cut in your spirit today. Come on, someone, because you will not reach for what you cannot believe for. The absence of faith is the absence of favor. People that have a God-sized dream are people that refuse to possess a small thinking mentality. I need you to deal with your mentality today. You've been thinking too low. You've been thinking too less of yourself. I need you to deal with your mentality. There are some of you, you're watching your dreams walk by you. You're watching people. You're seeing people on, on Instagram and Facebook and social media. You're seeing them and you're saying, wow, I thought about doing that at one time. Wow, that is amazing. I had that same idea. Come on, let me see. Let me read the scripture to you. Hallelujah. Hebrews 11 and 13. Let's go over there. Hebrews 11 and 13. My God, help me. Amen. First lady. Yes. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. The devil is a liar. I'm going to see everything. Come on. I believe this. Tasha Combs has a song. Come on. I'm getting ready to see. Come on. I'm getting ready to see. I'm getting ready to see. I need somebody to say that with me. I don't know who's here with me this morning. I need somebody to say, I'm getting ready to see. Come on, something is getting ready to happen for you. Something amazing and incredible. Come on, someone, I'm getting ready to see you. Come on, everything that God has for me. Come on, I need you to believe it. Because if you don't believe it, then you won't be able to reach for it. Here, Hebrews 11 and 13 backs me up. It says, these all died in faith, not having received the promises, but having seen them afar off, and were 
persuaded of them and embraced them and confessed that they were strangers and pilgrims on the earth. Whoa. They, they seen them from afar off. They were persuaded of what they saw. They even embraced which means to hug what they saw. But if you go back at the top of the verse of Hebrews 11 and 13, they died in faith, not having received. They saw it. They were persuaded by it. What they saw, they embraced it, but they never got it. Mm. Most of the patriots of the Bible did not actually physically receive what was promised to them but through faith eyes, they were confident and assured of what was spoken. They would have it no matter what the circumstances they wind up in. Mm. There are promises waiting for us to see them, receive them through the eyes of faith that will never be conceivable through the natural eyes. You're trying to get things done in the natural. You're going to have to stop it. You're going to have to spend more time in prayer. You're going to have to spend more time speaking in, come on, in your heavenly language. Come on, someone. You're going to have to spend more time in the word of God. You're going to have to spend more time listening to God. Come on. They, they, here it is. Hebrews 11, 13 says, they died in faith, never receiving the promises, but they had the faith to see it. They saw it. Uh, they were persuaded of it. They embraced it. And confess that they were strangers and pilgrims on the land, but they never got it. My God, you cannot get, I told you at the beginning, what God has for you now. We cannot get these things. There are some things that really honestly will, you will not have access to if you try to bypass the principles and the system of God. Let me say that again. Someone need to write this down. There are some things right now that are pending. They are on layaway. They are ours. They got our name on the box. Our name is on the package. Come on. Our address is there. It is ours. No one can pick it up without your ID. I'm talking. I'm talking. No one can go and claim it. No one can go and bump you out of the line and claim these things because these promises got your name on it. They are waiting. They are waiting. You ever came home, you check your mailbox, and there was a little stick, a piece of paper um, that was that basically indicated you got to go to the post office in order to claim this package because we need a signature or we need an ID. The package might just have been too big. There are some of you, God says, what I'm about to deliver into your life is too big for where you are. It's too big for your thinking. You got to change your mentality. It's too big for the circle that you keep. Mm, come on, your mind is too narrow. Your, your thinking is too narrow. I need you to enlarge. I need you to think bigger. I think you, I need you to look bigger. I need you to think wider. Come on, I see you looking at that little house. I see it. I see you looking at it. But because you think, you think that's all you can get. No, God said I'm about to bless you with what you did, did not think you deserve. I need somebody to catch that. I said it the other day. Come on, I've been holding on to it. God says, I see you. I see you over there checking out that little car. But I need you to understand that there is something called confidence, that which is an assurance, which is your access key to God. God says that I'll bless you and I'll show you where you can get what you deserve for less than what you, y'all, y'all not hearing me today. Somebody help me preach. I hear you, Mother Maria. Most of the patrons of the Bible did not actually physically receive what was promised to them. I'm done. But through faith eyes, they were confident and assured of what was spoken. They would have it, no matter what the circumstances. Listen, no matter what circumstances you're in right now, I need you to have confidence that God is going to do it. And not just God, not just God, but God is partnering with you to get it done. You got to understand this. If you don't believe nothing else, I need you to believe that God wants you healed. Mm. Yeah, 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 yeah. If you don't believe nothing else, if you're not going to reach for nothing else, I need you to believe that God wants you whole. Mm -hmm. Yeah. He don't want you around here causing pain, inflicting pain on others. He wants you to be healed in your heart. 
He wants you to be healed in your mind. He wants you to be delivered. He wants you to be set free. If you don't believe nothing else, I need you to believe that here it is. John 10, 10 says that Satan, the thief, comes to steal, to kill, and to destroy. You know the scripture, but it says that, that I've come that you may have life and that you may have it more abundantly. You got it? So you have to believe. You got to know that if nobody else want to see you make it, mm, talk to yourself, Tanya. You got to know that if nobody else want to see you make it, if everybody else is ready to see you fall, you got to know that without a shadow of a doubt that God wants to see you make it. You got to believe within your heart of hearts that if nobody else wants to see you come through, if no one else wants to see you break out, if no one else wants to see you walk into it, if no one else wants to see you drive, if no one else wants to see you make it, if no one else wants to see you conquer, you got to know that God does. You got to know that God is ready. God is ready to get you through it. God is ready to walk you out of it. God is ready to see you have it. You got to believe that in Jesus' name that you receive today. Hallelujah. The Bible says, not having received the promises, they embrace them, which means to hug, which means to squeeze, which means to grip, meaning you grasp it, meaning you understand, comprehend, and apprehend and follow. See, there are some things that God has been speaking to you and I, but the constant struggle is that I don't understand what God is saying. Because you're trying to understand it through the lens of the natural. You're trying. So the struggle we have, it lies in our need to see things before we can accept them to be true. You, you heard the word before you could accept it to be true, you want it to happen. No, it don't work that way. I need you to believe that what God has spoken. Then once you believe it, I need you to receive it. I want you to accept it that this is what God wants for me. This is what God wants for me, even if I ain't ready for ministry, even if I don't want to do this, even if I don't want to preach, even if I don't want to, even if I don't want to, because some of us, you like me, like, uh, 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 who was that, Jonah? Jonah in the Bible that was fighting, he was like, uh, uh, I ain't going to Nineveh, uh, 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 no, I am not going to deliver that message, no, I'm not going to do it. But what happened to Jonah? And there are many of you, you're struggling. You're struggling because you're trying to get something that you haven't even paid the price for. You don't even believe. You're still struggling with me. You're still struggling with the acceptance that God wants to do it in your life. Today, I'm here to just partner with you and let you know that irregardless of the opposition, irregardless of what is happening, Irregardless of what, what the naysayers, the sideline talkers, those who, who, who know you're great. So you got to understand that there are people right now, they've been assigned to your life to agitate and aggravate you. They've been assigned by Satan. They have been assigned by Satan to get on your nerve, to make you turn around, to make you backslide. I'm serious. There are some people who have been professionally assigned to get all they need to know about you and turn around and use it all against you. There are some people, but then there the Bible says there are more for you than against you. Can we talk about that? Can we talk about how there is? See, but if, you, if you're all caught up in the opposition and the, those who are opposing you and the things that are happening to you, if you're all caught up in that, you will miss out on what it is that God is trying to do in the midst of it. And you'll never, you'll see it, You'll embrace it. You'll, you'll know. You'll know. Yep, yep, yeah, I know. But you'll never get it. Father, in the mighty name of Jesus, I thank you for your word today. God, I thank you because you're holy. Thank you because you're righteous. I thank you because you are amazing. I thank you because you're incredible. I thank you because you know all. I thank you because you're here with us. I thank you because you are in control. God, even as one of our partners on yesterday, hallelujah, was involved in a car accident. Lord God, and I begin, hallelujah, to call and, and hear her voice as she began to shout, thank you, Jesus, for new life. And she began to say that although the vehicle was out of control, that God kept her alive and showed her it's because I'm in control of your life. 
God, I thank you, Lord God, for beginning to speak to us and reveal yourself to us, even in the most uncomfortable, most almost harming situations. Lord God, I thank you because you've never left us nor forsaken us. God, I thank you, Lord God, that even when we don't understand it all, God, you're already in front of it. Hey, she got it up. You're already in front of every scenario, every situation. We give you glory and praise right now. We ask that you forgive us for every sin. We ask you forgive us for the sin of doubt. We ask you forgive us for complaining. We ask you forgive us for, for, for procrastinating. We ask you for, for to forgive us, Lord God, for just not really believing and trusting in you. Lord we God, we ask you to forgive us for taking our eyes and our attention, our focus off of you and putting them on ourselves and putting our, our attention on what we're going through and not on where you're trying to take us. God, we ask right now that you have created us a clean heart and renew the right spirit within us. Somebody today, Lord God, has heard this word. Someone today, Lord God, has heard this word. And they are going to take this word, God. They're going to be like David. They're going to put this word in their heart that they may not sin, that they may not, Lord God, turn away, that they may not turn back, but that they may stay focused, God, that they may stand firm, that they may stand confident, Lord God, that they may not move, be swayed to and fro, tossed like the wind, but God, but that they may be mature. God, stand firm, God, unwavering, God, in what? you have told them and what you have spoken about them. I thank you for this reassuring message on today that everything is going to be okay. It's going to work out how you created it. It's going to work out how you designed it. It's going to work out how he wanted it to. But we've got to hold on and keep the faith. Not doubt in our hearts. But believe in God and know that God is able to perform that which he has spoken concerning our life. Now God if there be anyone that is sick among us in the mighty name of Jesus, I pray for healing today. I pray that you will touch them from the top of their head to the sole of their feet. God, search us. Search every place within ourselves. God, every crevice. God, get in every corner of our life and search us, God. And if you find anything that should not be, God, we give you permission and authority to remove it, to distract it from our lives. Lord God, so that we will not hinder ourselves from moving into our promotional place. That we won't hinder ourselves from moving missing out on what you're doing in this season. Oh God, like the song says, whatever you're doing, just don't do it without us. God, whatever you're doing, move us out of the way so that you can have your way. Oh God, in the mighty name of Jesus, we might be tested from all types of ways, from the left and the north, the south, the west, the right, but God, we know that you're able. We know that you're able to do anything and everything. Oh, but fail. So we give you glory and honor today and we bless your mighty name, God, in the mighty name of Jesus. We give you praise and glory and honor in Jesus' name. Amen. Well, it looks like we've been having some technical difficulties on today. Isn't that just like the devil? Yeah, but it's all good. It's okay. I thank you to those partners who, who jumped on Instagram. Uh, everyone is not on Instagram. We're going to take care of this. The one great thing about technology is that the recording is um, the tapings are recorded and so we're going to go back and um, I'm going to look at what happened and figure it out and then we're going to make sure that it gets added uh, to the uh, our Facebook live page and, and also if you're not following me on YouTube I want to encourage you to subscribe to my YouTube channel I believe it's under Tanya A. Green um, there should be a link if you're watching on Instagram there should be a link to my YouTube every Wednesday every Sunday we post the live services um, on our YouTube page as well. Um, so again, to those who were able to jump on uh, Instagram, thank you to those who um, are will watch the replay later, the partners and guests, thank you. Again, I'm not really sure why um, the streaming stopped on Facebook. However, we are still ministering as if we were. <laughs> Come on, someone, because that's what we do. You stand firm. You, you, you don't waver. Come on, you don't stop and start over. You just keep on going because no that everything is under control. So right now we're getting ready for opportunity for prosperity. Um, those that are with us that are on here that want to sow, you can prepare your tithes and your offering, your love gifts, whatever. You may say, Pastor, this word bless me. I want to sow individually into your life. Well, there's information on the link if you're watching on Instagram by way where you can sow. I have partners all over that watches our lives and they make sure that they put seed in the ground. Why? 
because they're being blessed. This is one of the ways that we say thank you. You know, if we was in a restaurant, once we finish eating, the waiter or waitress is going to come over with that ticket and they're going to say, ma'am, let me know, sir, when you are ready. So here it is. God is ready to partner with you. And one of the ways, one of the things, one of the principles he has established is by way of sowing. So we're getting ready right now to prepare our hearts to, to sow. And again, if you want to, you can go to our cash app at uh, dollar sign Destiny Life CH and release your types and your offering. Um, as well, you can go on our website at www.mydestinylife.com. Amen, amen, amen. I pray that you were blessed by the word of the Lord today. Jesus, help us to stand sitting. Uh, yes, amen. I'm seeing your comments. We this, uh, yes, yeah, seeing your comments. Thank you, Jesus, for being in control. Amen, amen. I'm seeing your comments. God bless you. Yes, yes, yes. Amen, amen, amen. So right now, there is getting ready. If you are going to watch the replay, once we get everything reset back up, you will notice that there is going to be a blessing that we want to release unto your life on today. I believe that the blessings of the Lord maketh one rich and out of no sorrow. We want our entire families to be blessed. Less. We want to make sure that we are speaking blessings over our children, over our loved ones, over everyone. Amen. During this pandemic, you know, we may see each other today and someone may be gone tomorrow. So we want to make sure that we can uh, keep the continual blessings of the Lord um, uh, released upon each other's life. Amen. So that we can be able to see the fruit. I want to see the fruit of my labor. Amen. Is there anybody other than me that wants to see the fruit of our labor? And so so we're getting ready to uh, to play right now something to treat for you. Again, giveaway today is today. If you are one of the individuals who shared the live experience on this past Wednesday, we're going to ask that you send your information to the contact number that was on the screen. And also, if your birthday is this week, we also want you to send your information. I believe it is 321252. I'm trying to get that number uh, uh, 1678 so even if you're watching by way of, of Instagram and um, that number is 321 252 1678 you can type the word giveaway and um, there's going to be a prompt that will be sent to you if you fill that information out we will make sure that we get you your prize on this week amen amen so right now i am done we pray god's blessings be upon you we have a special treat for you pay attention amen god bless you god bless you mother we love you so kindly blessings upon you Thanks.
Yeah. 